think the mistakes they make are they talk about their services, but they don't explain why it's beneficial for the client. It all ends up just trying to sound clever, and that's really to hide a bigger problem, which is they don't have standout reason to be chosen over others. Strategic data-driven creativity and omnichannel customer-centric innovation. I can't even say it without running out of breath. Your agency's website is probably costing you dozens of leads each week. That's dozens of potential clients slipping through your fingers. Now, even if your website looks amazing, it's useless if it doesn't clearly communicate your value and unique selling proposition. Without a crystal clear message, you're leaving money on the table. But what if your messaging was so powerful that it penetrated deep into the souls of your prospects, leaving them utterly convinced that they need your agency within seconds of hitting your landing page. That's what you're about to learn to do in today's video. We've lined up an extraordinary guest, Roland Gurney from Treacle. Roland is a world-renowned agency messaging mastermind who's helped average agencies skyrocket from a million dollars in annual recurring revenue to six million dollars in ARR from simply nailing their message. Plus, to make this experience practical, Roland has agreed to pick out an agency website that we are going to tear down, edit, and recreate step by step. As an extra bonus, he's also agreed to help 10 of our YouTube subscribers rewrite their entire value proposition. Now, if you wanna be a part of that, keep watching more for more details. Now, before we begin, put your phone on silent. Don't go anywhere because this interview is going to be jam-packed with visuals and templates and step-by-step -step processes that Roland and I are going to show you. And trust me, by the end, this episode is not only going to help you rewrite your agency's message, it's going to rewrite your future success as an entrepreneur. Let's cut to the chase and get to the interview. You are not a man who minces around with his words, so uh, you said nailing your positioning is the first part of the problem. Finding the right words to tell it and sell it is just as important. Can you explain agency positioning in simple terms and why it's so crucial for an agency's success? Sure. Yeah, positioning an agency is basically, it's the process of finding that one big standout reason to be chosen over all the others. So that process is about working out your point of difference, whether that's a, a, a sector, a service, or a unique solution. It's that one thing that means they should go with you, they should hire you over all the alternatives. And then the next part, as you said, is the messaging. That's how you communicate that sell the value of it to them. If we think about uh, uh, kind of what the average agency does, they tend to use a, a lot of this phrase, we're a leading digital agency. Well what, 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 well, what does that mean? And that leads to a very powerful thing you said, which is if you sound like every other agency, you'll be treated as a commodity. So you've built a website that kind of highlights this pitfall. Can you walk us through it and help agencies understand where do they go wrong? And this is a website uh, that you won an award from, from marketing newsletter, The, the Drum. So I, I really want to see what this is about. Sure, yeah. So this is our um, spoof agency that we, we created called Beige. And it is the world's most average agency. So this is a complete uh, spoof, a satire on the agency landscape. And the whole reason for this was you know, we look at hundreds, if not thousands of agency websites. So we see the same claims, the same cliches, the same clutter on, on every agency website. And that's why without a USP, these kind of agencies just end up trading on who's the fastest, who's the cheapest, who's the nearest, who's the luckiest. So we wanted to capture all of that in a website. And this is it. So it opens on the, on the website here. Yeah. Okay. Let's walk through it. What, what, what are the things they tend to say? What are the mistakes? So the mistakes are from a kind of positioning, a differentiation thing, saying things like we are, you know, we're specialists in every kind of discipline. You know, you can't be a specialist in everything. So the big mistake I see agencies make is trying to offer everything to everyone. That's an almost an impossible position to ever describe and sell to anybody. You're just a jack of all trades. So, you know, working exclusively with any brand anywhere is a kind of, you know, a slight Mickey take of us saying, you know, you haven't chosen who you best suited to, who you should really be serving. You're just willing to work with anybody. You're reactive, not proactive. So we see this a lot going through. There's a lot of stuff in here about 
Um, agencies just overcomplicating the way they talk, trying to sound professional, trying to sound clever. That's just not how people interact nowadays. You can talk to people in simple, clear language they'll understand. But using all these buzzwords, we see a lot of buzzwords, and it just it it just makes prospects have to think too much, and that's never a good thing. Okay, like uh, like, like like what? Like we're 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 specialists in you know highly technical SEO, and we create all these you know ridiculously complicated frameworks. What what is it that they tend to do that makes makes them sound complicated? Yeah, there's definitely that. So it depends what area you're in, but overcomplicating the process, trying to sound clever about you know strategic creativity, you know adding unnecessary words in all over the place, you know right, just using the most complicated forms of words. So utilize instead of use, you know, trans transform transform rather than change. It, it all ends up just trying to sound clever. And that's really to hide a bigger problem, which is they don't have a standout reason to be chosen over others. So they're trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. So you end up with these kind of things, you know, just things that don't really mean much and just strategic data-driven creativity and omni-channel customer-centric innovation. I can't even say it without running out of breath. It's it's just a kind of mush of words that mean very little in the end. So yeah, the whole site is really just just kind of this point um, in the about us section. We get it. We see a lot of agencies trying to say what makes them different is the fact that they're honest or they're transparent or they're people. But these are just things that clients expect as table stakes. This is not these aren't reasons to be chosen. They're just the, the base level. So this whole site is really just a bit of a tongue in cheek. Uh, play on the on the agency world, really. Okay, fair enough. So we talked about what not to do. Let's um, uh, let's let's help agencies kind of understand and empathize with a local business owner. So if I'm a local business owner, restaurant, salon, uh, law practice, whatever it is, and I'm going to an agency's website, like what what's going to appeal to me? What what works? So you know, prospects, clients, they're looking for a few things. They have a either a conscious or a subconscious list of things they want to know. So when they land on your agency's website, they want to know, first of all, do you are you the right kind of agency? Do you do the right thing that I'm looking for? So maybe it's digital marketing, maybe it's SEO, maybe it's website design, I don't know. But quite early on, they need to know that they're in the right place. So otherwise, if you're making them think too much, it's friction, it's sales friction, it's going to stop them converting, inquiring. So they need to know the other right kind of agency. The next is they're looking for reasons to choose you over the other options that they've got. So this is when things come into play around positioning. Are you a specialist? Do you have a particular area of expertise? Do you have something distinctive, something desirable, something ownable in the way you do your work that makes you very valuable to that client? Sometimes it's geographical. They want to know that you're nearby, that you understand their clientele, that you understand the location they're in. But what they're looking for is reasons to choose you over anybody else. So you need to put those high up immediately so that they can land, understand, and then make a decision by the end of that page. Okay. How, how, how do they do that effectively? Reasons to choose you. Is there some key tips you have? And we're going to go into a case study uh, next, but like uh, other key list of things that resonate in terms of, yeah, I, I want to work with this agency. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have a canvas. I'm going to flash it up, actually. This this will maybe make sense of this slightly. With a, um, so this canvas is is the backbone of our process. It's it's freely available. I can send out the link to everybody. That's absolutely fine. But it's the, it's the structure at the, at the core of our strategy process. So choosing a target client, niching, niching, whatever you call it, that that can be a great play. So just as you said, Fish, you know, like law firms or local restaurants, if you choose to specialize in serving one specific client, that instantly pushes away 99% of the market because you are the go-to expert who understands their world, not just marketing, not just SEO, not just web design. You understand the restaurant business. You understand you know, the golf market, whatever it may be. But that's a really strong play, especially for early stage startup agencies. Recommend that as a great play. Focus in, become the expert, the go-to expert in that sector, that industry, that vertical, that will get you through the door with lots more prospects. So that's the first box. The second is service. 
specialized by service, right? So rather than offering a whole massive suite of separate services, which I have nothing wrong with, you could really focus in all around website, let's say, for example. So website uh, design, you know, website development, maybe then there's some SEO, you know, that could all, but it's all centered around website as the core service. So instantly, again, that pushes you away from the mass market with multiple services. You're then playing in a smaller pool. That's the point of positioning. It's to reduce your competitor set at every point. You don't want to be up against every agency out there. You want to shrink your competitive set to the minimum viable market, right? So that you're fishing in a pool where there's still enough for you to make a good living, grow your agency, become well-known, rich, famous, all the things you want to do but not such a big market that you're competing against every other agency. So service category, that's another one. Then we have a layer here. If you don't want to specialize by client or category, that's fine. Is it then about how you do your work? So it's honing in on a specialism or wrapping up your approach or process or methodology or philosophy into a kind of really robust, almost trademarked way of doing your work. And that can be your point of difference. So when a client comes to you and they say, but I've spoken to Joe Schmo and they do the same thing and they offer the same services to the same kind of local businesses, you can say, well, that might be true, but we're the only ones who do it this way. And here's our system or our process that makes us the obvious choice over those guys. So there's different ways of approaching this, but those are the three main ones, sector or client, category, and then an approach or a way of working. That's amazing. Thanks so much for breaking this, this down step by step. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I found this uh, kind of what, what you said there, minimal viable market, fascinating. Does this actually help agencies with their lead generation process as well? Where if you become that specific and your messaging resonates so much with a certain niche, it kind of helps agencies stop wasting their time with the wrong leads. Does yes. it have that effect as well? Absolutely. So this work positioning, it sounds like a kind of weird abstract strategy word. Think of it as sharpening the ax for all your sales. This is the foundation that the best houses are built on. So if you are willing to focus in on a specific client, it means your messaging can be really specific, really resonate with those people talking about their specific and unique needs and problems. And then when you go out to market and you have a big marketing drive, a big new business push, you have sales calls, you're talking so much more specifically to them about their problems. And that's what people buy. They buy solutions to their own problems. They don't just buy generic agency services. They buy solutions to their own problems. So you are sharpening that ax that says, we are one of a handful of people that specialize in the problem you've got and that you need solving. So yeah, it has a massive knock-on effect for everything you do after this process. Okay, amazing. So uh, I'm really excited about this next part here. So let's go into our case study. So we offered the Vendasta Facebook community an opportunity to have their agency positioning rewritten by you. Uh, I sent through, uh, I think about, about 12 suggestions and you've picked Zoshul Gong um, made by one of our partners. His name is Michael. Um, let's take us through the chain. Let's take us through the website and the changes you've you've made uh, to sharpen his axe. Yeah, thank you, Michael. This is great. Look, I want you to take this all with the best, you know, possible. Um, you know, take it take it all in the right way. This is all meant, hopefully, to just showcase the theory. Um, obviously, I don't know you. We're not working side by side, so I'm making some assumptions here that would normally be part of the the full process would be talking to you and understanding. So bear with me. Um, but what I can see is Social Gong uh, have the website and they specialize in lead generation. And you can see for small businesses straight away. So there's some good stuff here. Let's, let's start with the things that I really like. So lead generation is the opening couple of words on here. That tells me as a prospect, am I in the right place? Yes or no? That's a box ticked. I know Either I'm in the market for lead generation or I'm not. So great, that looks good. Now I understand small businesses here and it's a really good construct. This service for these people, I like that as a, as a construct for any agency's website to tick that box. Now, my only concern here is small businesses are a kind of 
loose definition. So the more focused you can get either on the service or the client, the better. Now, lead generation is is pretty focused. I understand that. Probably B2B because B2C don't generate leads. Small businesses could be anything though, right? And even what is the definition of a small business? They go, it's quite hard to define. There is also an argument that lots of businesses don't like to think of themselves as small businesses, even though really they are. So there's some, I've kind of taken this in a little different direction. Another good thing that I think Michael's done here, which is great, is there's some copy here that really talks to the small business owner, which is great. So you can see the use of you. I always recommend talk to them about their problems and what how it's going to impact their lives. Don't just talk about your agency and your services. So easy sense check. Go on your website, agency's website, and just count how many times you use we and our, O-U-R, versus you and your. Okay, now that balance should be mostly you and your because then you're talking to your prospect. If it's all we do this, our expert team do this, it's all about your agency and that becomes boring. It's a monologue, not a dialogue. You need to be you need to be getting them excited and part of this story. So some great stuff in here from Michael already. You, your, it looks good. What I would say is um, it still feels quite open. So a lot of it is talking about you're a small business owner. You don't have the time to do that. And I understand that definitely is a play here, but I do feel like it could be even tighter, even sharper, really hit them in the feels a bit more than this. So I'll, I'll show you where I've taken it. Then it goes down to some um, kind of services here. So done for you, lead generation, social media management, book sales calendar. So I can see a bit of a progression here. Um, and it's got some qualifying copy underneath, which is pretty good. And then here was interesting. So I won't play it now just for the sake of uh, here, but there's a video and this video showed me a whole new world that, of what Michael does. And it's actually very much more focused on LinkedIn lead generation. Okay. So this is the video. I won't play it, but you can see um, this. I stopped. He explains the process, which is great. So I'm, I'm trying to gather some intel, some research here. And I looked at some, I paused here and I could see that um, on his client list, there is a consulting firm and a few agencies. So I kind of get the sense that Social Gong really could focus on LinkedIn lead generation specifically for agencies and consulting firms. I feel like that's a that's an area that could really help the agency differentiate from all the other ones out there. So as you can see on the site, there's a bit of a process here. And then you can book a 15-minute discovery call. I think that's a good idea. I like that. And then again, kind of repetition here, which is I would always say if you've got the real estate, try and use it to um, emphasize a different selling point, not repeat too heavily on exactly the same message. And you can see there's some more solving business pains, which is good. I think it's that understanding that you need to solve a pain, which is great, and, and down here. But there are a few things for me as, a, as an outsider that when I look at this, that kind of would worry me a touch. Now, Michael, take this in the best possible way. So when I click this menu, I get... Um, it's just the WordPress standard theme here with some lorem ipsum. So I kind of feel like that's an odd way to, to have the menu. This home section here is where I, I land on as, as once I come to the site, but it says home twice, which feels like I want a big message. I want something to hit me straight away of like, wow, these guys are for me. It feels like lost real estate here. I think we can play with the positioning here and I'm going to take a leap of faith. And I've reworked some of the copy and some of the messaging here. Again, I think when I clicked view our process page, it just brings me back to here. So just in terms of the website itself, I think there's some navigation and design issues that I would look to tweak. But I think that comes after you've done the positioning and messaging work. That's the icing on the cake. So let me jump into where I see this going and we can go from there. There's also quite a lot of stock imagery on here, which I don't think adds that premium feel and it's a bit grainy in places. So here's where I wanted to take it. This is how I would see the website opening and I might be miles off, but a cleaner opening 
to the website. And I've not put any design in here yet. This is just very basic, so bear with me. But I think we could really use this section here straight away to talk about a value, a, a value proposition. So close dream clients directly on LinkedIn. So this is where I think we can sell the benefits to the prospects who are coming on. If they're an agency or a consulting firm, they could be winning their dream clients directly through LinkedIn. And then I've got this one-line positioning here, LinkedIn lead generation for agencies and consulting firms. So just like I was saying, a prospect lands, they're like, wow, that sounds good. And then yes, we've ticked a box here to say, I'm in the right place. This looks like a specialist who understands my world, my problems, my ambitions. And I think that's really important. That's the point of positioning. It, it's, it's aligning, it's rapport, it's instantly, wow, these guys are for me. So these are just some mocked up logos of clients. I think that's always good for that social proof element. So anytime you can put logos, stats, testimonials, it's building your credibility all the way through. Here again, a button, floating button, book call, strong call to action. That would always be on the website, for example. And I've played around here, and this is a big leap. I understand it's outside of my remit to swap this to be social LinkedIn so that it's clear from the beginning, you see the LinkedIn logo that they're now a specialist in the thing. And this came from the video, by the way, this is not me totally making this up. I'm just dialing it up to 11 from the video. That any Anything around color? Uh, is, there, is there any tricks around colors and keywords that agencies should think about? So color wise, I mean, I'm not, a, not the designer, but it just I know best practice from having a design team in house and development team you know, this this call to action button is a contrasting color. You can see how it, it it instantly catches your eye. That should always be the case. It should be very clear and obvious where to go to take that action. So it's not hidden away. I think if I go back here, you can see stay tuned. Here was to book a 50-minute discovery call. It's it's in just a very light font, and you would only know it's hyperlinked if you roll if you roll over it with your mouse. Whereas I'm suggesting that should be just absolutely hit them in the face. They know exactly where to go if they want to book a call. I would say don't make this longer than two or three words at most and just make it very clear. Book a call. It's a yes, no. Don't ask them a question. Don't leave it open to interpretation. If they click that button, they are booking a call. That's all we need to know. I would scroll down to a section like this and I've called this problem framing. This wouldn't be on the website. This is just as a reminder to people. I like to open the website quite often, not a rule, but just a good tactic to op to frame their problem. It builds rapport. They feel heard. They feel understood. So I've had a go at this and I've done it from a million mile distance. So don't expect this to be perfect, especially you, Michael. So you would open the problem statement. You're losing out on LinkedIn leads because, and then there's maybe three problems. They don't have the headspace. They've wasted money on lead gen software, and they're just not sure what to say to their prospects. So instantly, the idea is that prospect should be nodding, nodding along, thinking, yep, I'm, I've at least experienced one of these three, maybe two. This hits me. The old three. Exactly, right? We've all been there. We've all wanted to leverage LinkedIn and struggled with it. So frame the problem. That's what this section is about here. You scroll down to this problem framing. This then sets up something solution naming. So I've taken a complete pun here. Say hello to our lead link services. I put lead link in a different color to make it pop. So visually it's it's like, okay, wow, that's standing out. And it's got the little trademark just to make it feel like a robust system here. This makes it feel like this is something Michael's done hundreds of times. It's guaranteed to deliver. It's been honed through frontline experience. So here you can say, done for you LinkedIn lead generation, all handled by the experts in attracting more target clients. So we're talking about target clients here because we're talking to agencies and consulting firms. That's the positioning that we leaned into. So this is solution naming. Then I would go down to a little bit more detail here. So this is how that lead link would work. Lead, li lead list building. I've only just put description. I've not written this all out profile optimization, and then the outreach campaigns. This is broadly what Michael and Social Gong have already. It's just a bit more tailored to LinkedIn now. Obviously, we would need to fill in the details of this. I don't have all of that detail to hand. This is just a rough skeleton draft of it all. 
Oh, I love it. I love it, Roland. You've got a formula brewing here. Brewing. Um, let, let's continue brewing. on. Right. So then, to build that credibility out, here's the video. Right? Here's Michael's video. It's a great video. And what this video has, so which is great, which is so strong, is it has specific details about the process that are missing from the website. They're all in the video, but the video and website to me don't match because the video is all about the processes for LinkedIn. You can literally see it. Target prospects, build LinkedIn list, send custom messages. Now I understand Michael's probably listening, watching somewhere thinking, but we also do loads of other services and we can do LinkedIn for, we can do other kinds of uh, lead generation and we can also do it for other kinds of businesses. And this is where agencies get the fear. They get scared because they can see the dollar signs. They can see all the revenue they're saying no to and they get worried. They panic. But actually, positioning is a filtering system. It should be filtering out some people so that it's easier to filter in and, and win the other ones. So I think this LinkedIn thing looks like a really strong, ownable point of difference here. So I would put the video in here as well. Now, the third part is outcome claiming. So we've had problem framing, solution naming, and now outcome claiming. So here, get qualified client calls flooding into your calendar. This is the benefit, the outcome, the way their lives are going to be better. Imagine more sales calls, notifications, all without lifting a LinkedIn finger. No more hustling, haggling, and hoping, just a reliable pipeline of exciting prospects. This is the way that Michael can make his clients' lives better better, more fulfilling, richer, stronger, all of those things. And you would put some statistics here, 74% more leads generated, you know, hundred million dollars generated. I don't know, but this is the, this is the structure that converts on a website. This is the formula. It can be moved around. It can change, but this, this is a nice structure to start with. Then we're into credibility. Your prospects are thinking, great. I love it. I want that. But are you the people that can do it for me? Can you deliver? So here, I would suggest have some case studies. And that's something that wasn't on the original website. There's not, I can't see the work before. I can't see anything. Now, you don't have to show all the actual messages that you're sending to, you know, on LinkedIn, but just say, here's how we help this brand or this business go from here to here. And just a few words here. That's fine. That's all it needs. A logo, some imagery, done. Then we come into a section which is um, an interesting one. It's almost like why the alternatives won't work for you. Now, this is something that your prospects have subconsciously in their head, and you are trying to cut them off before they use this as a reason to not call you. So why most lead gen leads to nothing? So a little play on words. And then here it would have three reasons or three mistakes or three, three reasons to, that it doesn't work. So DIY lead gen distracts you from client work. Other lead gen firms lack LinkedIn expertise. Doing nothing means you're losing out. So we're trying to say, these are the alternatives you've got, but they're not right for you. That's why you need us. That's the point of this. And now you would write that a bit more description. We would get rid of this header here, but in principle, this is the section. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to take, a, I will take a breath at some point, I promise. But it comes down into the this next bit, which is a building rapport section. So the people buy from people. Obviously, you know, today it's digital. I understand that B2B it agencies sell digitally quite a lot. But here, Michael, if you have a picture of you, your team, and some intro to you, what that's doing is it's showing them that there's some humans behind this. And it and it's that thing of that human to human connection, just a face or some faces is really powerful. So I would recommend just a little introduction to you, your team, whoever's there. That's really nice. And then again, as we go, we're nearly there, down the bottom of the, the bottom of the page, handling their objections again. So I love a, an FAQ. I don't think it needs to be massive, but I think having a few answered questions about reasons that they're looking to get out of this, because we're trying to push them to convert, to just inquire with us. What is it that's the barrier in their head at this point? Is it price? Is it speed? Is it location? Is it how credible we are? Is it, um, it could be all kinds of things. So we're going to try and head those off at the pass and think about what the biggest burning questions they've got that could mean they don't want to choose us. And we're going to answer those right here, right now. And that that's removing the barriers, the hurdles they have in their head. 
And then lastly, it scrolls down to some more social proof, testimonials, and then it should lead again to a call to action at the bottom. And I like it to mirror what came at the top. So want to close dream clients on LinkedIn, book a call. And that's literally bookended with the same kind of messaging on both ends. So it feels like a natural conclusion to the argument we've just presented all around it. I realize that's a lot of talking, so sorry. Thanks for No, it's all good, mate. I absolutely love it. And for every agency owner watching, you know what, let's let's just summarize this. Uh, Roland, let's give them some homework to do, okay? So uh, really sharpen your positioning, right? Instead of lead generation for every business, you've made it lead, yeah, you've closed dream clients on LinkedIn. You've made it very specific. Name the problem, name the solution, um, uh, showcase your services, uh, show credibility, um, outcome claiming um, uh, and more layers of credibility. Why the alternatives don't work? I found that to be really interesting. That was that was really interesting. Uh, building rapport and um, and then having those FAQs at the end. And agency owners shouldn't be scared of kind of diving into this level of detail. It's going to help you get much better leads. Yeah, exactly that. Specificity sells. It's a horrible word. The more specific you are, the more people feel heard, the more likely they are to then take the action you want them to take. Okay. Uh, let's finish up with value proposition, Roland. So I, I love I love in this LinkedIn post where you talked about your agency's value proposition is probably awful. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it likely it likely likes it, it likely lacks um, a value and b proposition. Okay, so so we're think you're very used to thinking about value proposition just being one one thing. Well, what's what's the difference and how do agencies kind of na nail having both right? Yeah, it's a tough it's a tough one, right? So for the purposes of this, let's say this is the value proposition, right? It's the it's the it's the opening to the website. It's that line or two that explains why they should choose you. So we spend a lot of time looking at these, working on these. It's exactly what we do specifically for agencies. I think the mistakes they make are they talk about their services, right? So they explain what they do, but they don't explain why it's beneficial for the client. Right, So there's a whole hierarchy of benefits from very functional benefits, commercial benefits, personal benefits, emotional benefits, societal benefits. The work that every agency does has a benefit that they need to sell. And ideally, just honing in on one, one benefit. So that's the value part. They need to understand what the value of their work is for a client. The next part is the proposition side. So they need to... On its own, it needs to stand as a, as a reason to choose them. It needs to push them to want to take some action. So here, for example, the proposition side, it's, it's quite often I see agencies, for example, with social LinkedIn here, they would use their value proposition area on the website and they would just say, hello, welcome to social LinkedIn. Now that is not a proposition. That's the beginning of a very boring story, but it's not. there's no proposition in there. There's no value or proposition. There's nothing that's driving me to want to take action. Whereas here, close dream clients directly on LinkedIn with a book a call, you know, instantly I'm being offered something of value and I'm being offered a way to make that value real. So already something is being proposed that could be really valuable for me as a client. I see too many agencies open with really soft, nothingy statements, buzzwordy, abstract, or just really dull nuts and bolts, an SEO agency or you know, uh, a marketing agency that grows your business. I mean, I understand that that's true, but it's just kind of generic and it doesn't really drive anybody to want to take an action as a result. So the value is the benefit, proposition is pushing them to do something. Okay. All right. Before we finish, we do have a special offer for uh, the people watching this video and our YouTube subscribers here. But um, where can where can anyone watching this video go to if they need uh, help with this stuff? Sure. So, I mean, our agency website is treacle.agency, T-R-E-A-C-L-E dot -E agency. You can go on there and get a sense of what we do. And people can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm always near a screen. So Roland Gurney um, on LinkedIn, you'll find me uh, through Treacle or um, just searching my name on there. 
and always happy to chat to people. I'm, yeah, I'm not behind a paywall. I'm always near a screen. If people have questions, um, want to want to chat about their agency, then they can drop me a line. Okay, and Roland, you've generously offered to help 10 Vendasta YouTube subscribers revamp their agency messaging for free. Okay, what, what do they need to do? So if, they, if they, people subscribe to the channel and uh, comment with their website URL, we'll pick 10 lucky people and I will jump in. I'll have a look at your website. I will make some edits and changes and suggestions and we'll post those back to you and hopefully show you some new angles and ideas for positioning and messaging that could really unlock growth for your agency. Beautiful. All right, Roland, thank you for so much for joining us from sunny London. This was terrific. You went into so much detail about so many things. Yeah, you, you showed us an actual case study. You showed us a positioning template. You told us everything kind of that agencies get wrong and all these tangible suggestions on what to get, um, on, on, on how to just have that specificity, help them kind of get the leads that they, that they want and get them closer to their dream customer. So we really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Not at all, it's been great. Thanks so much for having me.